These crucible essay topics have already been explained in class, but this is in case you missed it or perhaps you are still having some trouble. In the directions, it does tell you there are the different essay topics and they relate to the crucible. There's 10 different topics. In the play, it tells you the crucible, in the crucible, many of the characters learn things about themselves as well as others. So you have to tell me what insight is gained by the characters. You can change up these characters. It is your choice, but at least analyze three characters. So what insight, what knowledge did they gain? What did they learn about themselves or others? What did they learn about other people? So how pretty much did the character grow? What did they eventually learn? Okay, topic two, you want to tell me about pride. So it can be pride in a positive way or in a negative way. So you could discuss characters here. For example, you may be able to discuss Proctor. You can discuss Reverend Paris or different characters and pretty much you're discussing the theme of pride in the crucible. How is it relevant? How do the characters show or demonstrate pride in the crucible? Topic three, discuss a change or lack of change, which is means that the character does not change. They are the same. So throughout the entire play, they are exactly the same. So for example, you may analyze a character who does not change, meaning they're the same way. They, no matter what trials and errors they go through, they never change, either because they choose not to or because they're, they were born that way, I guess, like Lady Gaga. <laughs> now, discuss the change. So do they change? There are some characters that change. So they grow as a character or they become worse. So you could discuss, you know, about the main characters. Please make sure that the main characters and not your characters that barely come out. For example, Ezekiel Cheever, he is not a main character. So I wouldn't recommend that you write about him. Topic four. This is historical events, so you would have to connect the movement in the 1950s, which was led by Senator Joe McCarthy, and it had to do with communism. How is that similar to the crucible? How is this a witch hunt as well? So you would write pretty much a comparison essay or research paper about this. So what is similar? You could also discuss what is different. So that is a historical as aspect for those, you know, historical buffs out there in case you are interested. Here it says many of the characters in topic five change because of the intensity of the play. Please also take for granted, take, I mean, understand that it's a severe test of trial. The crucible, that's what it means. That is its definition. So what characters go through this severe test or trial? So what you're going to do is you're going to write a character study on one of the main characters. Again, main characters, not minor characters. You do not want to write about that because you will not develop a four page research paper. So again, his change or lack of change in the play. So it's kind of similar to topic three. Now topic six, the themes in the crucible is the importance of a good name. So who in the crucible fights for a good name? So you want to discuss that, analyze what is a good name? What does that mean? And what does it mean to different characters? So perhaps you may want to analyze, you know, John Proctor. Does he care about his name? Does he feel that he should have a good name throughout his life? Or does he feel that he shouldn't have a good name? So that's what you need to discuss. Also, you know, Reverend Paris, does he care about that? Abigail, Mary Warren. So you want to discuss those main characters as well. And of course, you need to use specific examples. For topic seven, the crucible is vitally concerned with the presentation of truth. So how is truth portrayed in the play? How is it demonstrated? And how is it that various characters show their true natures? So do characters pretend in the crucible? Or are they themselves throughout the play? Or do they even care about what other people think about them? Some of them pretend. So remember throughout our discussions the, during the entire semester and also in our readings, we discuss that also. Make sure to check your notes. So think about how truth is portrayed. How does Arthur Miller show the importance of truth in The Crucible? Topic eight. Some characters display abuse of power and we know we've discussed that in class. Who abuses their power? Who is in charge and just, you know what? I have this power, so I'm just going to use it and I'm going to abuse it. So who does this? Make sure you describe the characters. What do they do? 
what do they think about? Do they even care about abusing their power or do they not? So how is it that the characters abuse their power? And of course, you're going to have to find textual evidence for that. Topic nine. Here it talks about there are many examples of authority. Who is an authority figure? Who is it? Is it John Proctor? Is it somebody else? Here it's, tell, it's telling you that it is a tempting Sorry, it is tempting for a contemporary reader to accept John Proctor's choice of following only the authority of his conscience. And if you don't know what conscience means, I suggest you look up a synonym. See, a sense of right and wrong, very simple. But whose response does the crucible support as a true model of authority? So what is the true model of authority that is displayed in the crucible? And very few of you chose this one. So it would kind of be like a paper that describes John Proctor versus the authority that Arthur Miller was trying to write about. So this is what you need to discuss. Topic 10, follow a character through the crucible and analyze his or her character through a psychological lens. So do you want to diagnose a character with psychological issues? This one's really fun and a lot of you have chosen that one because you want to discuss and research psychological problems. Remember, you can use psychcentral.com. That's the only place that I'm allowing you to use. So in case you don't know how to spell it, it's psychcentral.com. So you can gather information from there. And also don't forget to go to EBSCO. There's also a video on that explaining you how to get those articles. Also, go to your local library. You have Destiny where you can log in and I've already taught you that as well. And it's also on a video. Now, going into the outline. Make sure that you start with a creative opening. Here I have a sample paper that I want to show you, if it lets me, <laughs> there it is. So this sample paper, this person decided to open the paper with a quote. Then they give me information, background information about physicians and mental issues before. So this is pretty much how you want to write your paper, or format your paper. Here. This is this person's thesis. It says, in the crucible, Abigail and Hale suffer from severe, sorry, several severe mental disorders. And in the catcher in the rye, we see the protagonist Holden with clear mental disorders. This is catcher in the rye. You do not have to write about catcher in the rye. It's simply the crucible. So your thesis would look like, in the crucible, Abigail and Hale suffer from severe mental disorders. And that's pretty much the main idea. That's what you're going to write about. So when I look at your thesis, your thesis has to tell me the main idea of your entire research paper. Understood? Now, as far as MLA, this is what it needs to look like. You have your last name. You insert the page number. Your name. My name. English 3.0. Three, or if you're in my first block, it's first and my second, dot two, and my third, dot three, and my fourth, dot four, my fifth, dot five. And December 16th, that's a due date by 11.59 p.m. Now you're going to go into your first body paragraph. Your first body paragraph, this is why you're working on this outline. You have body paragraph one. Tell me your topic sentence. So your topic sentence will eventually go here. Abigail Williams in the Crucible was seen as an innocent Christian woman who was just troubled with spiritual presence. But in the eyes of a present-day physician, she would have been seen as a very troubled young woman. So you see this person wrote their topic sentence, and this topic sentence tells me what the student is going to discuss throughout the paper. So that topic sentence, per se, would go here. So you would just insert the topic sentence there. So make sure that you write an original topic sentence. Now, concrete detail, your observation. So about this information from the book, what do you find out about a character? Their words, their thoughts, their actions. How do you know that this person suffers from a mental disorder? So, of course, you have to get a quote from the book. So you have, for example, here, this person decided to put it a little bit further down, and that's okay. You love me, John Proctor, and whatever sin it is, you love me yet. So then we have the secondary quote where it says, is preoccupied with fantasies, beauty, or ideal love. So this actually talks to me about narcissistic personality disorder. So this person decided to diagnose Abigail with narcissistic personality disorder. And it says, is the first and most evident disorder Abigail Williams appears to exhibit. Abigail is clear to be a very snobbish woman, almost craving excessive admiration. So how did 
that paper start like this? Well, pretty much you write sentences. So you have your concrete detail, your primary quote, and then a commentary. It's the same thing that you've been learning throughout your middle school, high school career about short answer. So you follow a method, you answer, cite, and explain. So ace or ape or whatever it is. But remember, we're following ice, which is introduce, cite, and explain. So it's the same thing that we're following. The secondary quote, it supports the topic sentence of the paragraph. So a secondary quote, remember, where do you get that from? Well, you get it from EBSCO. You get it from a book. Or you can also get it from an article, the one that you found in psychcentral.com. So that's where you get that. Same thing, you give me a commentary. And then you just repeat the process, primary quote, commentary, secondary quote, commentary, until you're done. Now, body paragraph two, that's a second idea that you're going to discuss that supports a thesis. Following the same format, if you do not need this section, you just delete it. Very simple. If you do need it, then make sure that you leave it. And finally, your concluding paragraph. Now, ma'am, but what if I have more than two body paragraphs? Well, very simple. Just copy paste and you will have a third body paragraph. So that's in case you want to use that. Of course, you need to change this to body paragraph three. This will be the third idea that supports the thesis. So it all depends on the length of your paper, on how elaborate you're going to be. Remember, you only have four pages, so you need to kind of keep it short. Finally, you have a concluding paragraph. You want to tell me this, so what? This is what you want to answer, so what? Like what pretty much do you want me to do with this information? So what is it that you have to discuss? I'm gonna show you a sample of a conclusion here. And this person eventually ended with the cause and effect of these characters having some sort of men major mental disorder is that it unravels unprecedented conflicts throughout the play or the novel, which is very true. Now, if you don't know what unprecedented means, you simply look it up define unprecedented and it tells you right here never done or known before so very simple now in the 21st century we can easily look up words that we don't understand if the mental disorders of these characters would have been and this should be would have been diagnosed and treated earlier they would have put a stop to the cause of the conflict abigail could have found if abigail would have found which should be would have found some sort of help for, the, for her progressing mental disorder, the problem that were revealed in the play in the crucible could have been prevented. So you see, this is kind of like a futuristic conclusion. This is what you want to aim for. So that's a so what. So what, what do you want me to do with this information? So that's eventually what it's going to look like. So your in an outline, this pretty much, you just put it here. That's it. And you tell me the cause and effect, this is going to be the B section, and then this is going to be letter C. So that's pretty much what that looks like. And eventually you have your works cited. You title it works cited. That's going to be the fifth page. This is where the student got this information. So if I click here, it will take me exactly to where the article is. So I would check here. And this is how you don't plagiarize. So, of course, how did this person get this information? Where did they go to or what did they do? It's very simple. There's a website called easybib.com. And on easybib.com, you simply copy paste the website and it will eventually create your MLA citation. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible because I have one minute. So, you copy. And here on easybib.com, if it will load, you get to input, you see website, you right click, you paste, site, and then you have to say, okay, well, yes, is, this is it. So it's like central. Of course, you have to fill in information that you may not know. So this is easybib and you fill in, well, is there an author? Is there a publisher, a sponsor? Display the URL, you always wanna click yes. Date access, electronically published, and then I wanna create the citation. So I click create citation, and it'll give you an MLA citation, and that's how you copy paste that. And eventually, you have this on your paper. So it's very, very simple. It's very user-friendly. So eventually, you have this. And of course, everything will be in alphabetical order. 
anything else, just let me know. I'm here to help. Thank you.